Now it's time for flip-flops and edges. I will show you four instructions. All of them are very simple, yet very, very, very useful. So I've created new scene. And uh, in this scene, we have only these four buttons here and these three lamps. And they're going to serve the purpose of simulating everything we need to explain what the flip-flops and edges are for and what they're doing. And before we get to our program, I want to show you one thing. I've changed the configuration of this button from momentary action to alternate action, which means whenever I press it, it remains pressed as long as I do not press it again. So it stays pressed. Uh, I did the same with this reset button here. It's also alternate action. The other two buttons are normal, so they're just momentary action. The reason why I did that is because it will make it easier for me to present the set reset and reset set difference for you. Let's go to the project. I've created the new project for that. It's already connected to the factory IO. I've created the default stack table already. It's here. So uh, the only thing I want to do, I want to show you of course, before we get to programming, is I want to show you how these buttons work. When I press once, it goes to set button, is sending true, changing to false, reset button, true, changes to false. Let's go to the programming now. Again, we're going to use some of the instructions that are available here on the right. And there are many ways to set and reset a tag in TIA portal. One way of doing that is the way I've shown you in the conveyor program. We were using just contacts and holes to, to latch a value. Okay, it was self-sustaining itself, but it's not the best way to do that according to me it's uh, it doesn't give you the, the clarity of the code i prefer much more to use set reset instruction you can use some of these latches here but i avoid using them i really rarely use them because it makes you use the same tag write the same tag more than once in the software which is well, I don't think it's a good idea. Sometimes it's necessary, but I avoid it at any cost. Let's start with the set reset. And what it has, it has two inputs, one output, and this is the place for the memory tag. So in the memory tag, uh, we're going to store the value of, well, what this instruction is calculating. Now we could uh, connect our output directly here but I don't like to do it and the reason why I don't like to do it is because it serves the purpose of memory we would have to read from the output you can do it however I advise not to do it but let's start from the inputs I've got them already here in in the tag table so I'm just going to connect the I have to create contacts. So I'm connecting the set button here. I'm connecting the reset button here. And on the output, of course, we will have SR light because we're using SR instruction. So I gave it the name SR light. And there we are. And we need some memory bit. We need to create this tag. So I'm going to give it a name. Normally, I don't give names like this. Uh, normally, I'm, I just keep an array of auxiliary bits and I just take a bit from, from array anytime I need it. But in this case, I, I will just give a name to it. And I know in one minute I'm going to need an auxiliary bit RS. And of course, it cannot be input 0.5. It's, it has to be a memory flag. 
in this case. Something that is not used, so 10.0 will be okay. I'm pulling it here. Before we get to testing, uh, let's, uh, let's create also the RS. It's going to be almost exactly the same. You just notice that in this case, R is above S1, so, so the order is, is changed. They're swapped, so the reset button goes here, the set button goes here, auxiliary bit RS, and of course both of these instructions are described in the help files, okay? So you can click on any of them, you can press F1, and you will have the description of these instructions in the help file. There's really <laughs> quite a lot of text for this simple thing, but it's the best to just see how it works, okay? So let's download the software to the PLC. And now see how they work. We start with the reset because they were set for for whatever reason. Actually, I know the reason. I, I was testing them before and the Q image was already there in the memory. Anyway, what happens when I press the set button? The command goes here and it sets both of the instructions. So right now, auxiliary bit RS and auxiliary bit SR are one. If I stop to press this button, the command disappeared, they still remain as one. When I press the reset, both of the outputs are gone. Again, I press the start, command gone, but the output remains. Reset, both gone. So they both behave in the same way. There is no difference between them when we operate like this but they are different instructions for a reason. So notice that this one is R1 here, and here we have S1. This means reset instruction will be dominant here, and here set instruction will be dominant. So what happens if I press both buttons at the same time? Well, in case where reset is dominant, of course, the output is zero. And if the set is dominant, the output will be one. Okay, so this is the difference between set reset and reset set instruction. They are very useful. I use them a lot in my programs. So I guess you will be using them quite a lot as well. Next thing I want to show you is edges. So positive and negative edge. What are edges? Well, uh, they are instructions that come for, that give you the signal only for one scan of the PLC. So whenever a state of some input, the input to the instruction changes from zero to one, we have a positive edge and the output will be one for one cycle. Whenever the state changes from one to zero, we have a negative edge. And also, if we're detecting the negative edge, the state of the output from this instruction from negative edge will change to one for one cycle. How does it look like in practice? I will show you both positive and negative edge detection. Also, there are many ways to do that. I, I will show you the one that I'm using the most because it's the most flexible, for me at least. I'm going to use these inputs here and I'm going to detect positive edge on start button and negative edge on the stop button. So let's start with the positive uh, start button and I'm going to use the instruction P trig for positive edge detection. And also, well, I need to remember the value 
from the previous cycle because I need to remember, okay, it was zero, it changed to one, so we have the, the positive edge detected. Same for negative edge. We had one, I remember this from last cycle, it's zero now, okay, negative edge detected. So I'm going to create uh, two auxiliary tags for positive and negative uh, edge detection so and what it's going to do it's going to give a command to start this light it can be a command to start the conveyor whatever in this case we have just a lamp so and let's add the reset command now I'm not going to use it yet I'm going to use it in a minute I will already have it how to make it work actually how to see that it's actually working let's use what we already know so let's use the set reset i'm using the set reset instruction and i need another auxiliary bit here so i'm going to name it auxiliary to make a difference okay we will have a set command here and this lights output here so uh, I don't remember the, the name of it so I'm just going to the in the tag table and it's sr edges light okay so now let's make a download it's right oh it was set it, it was there in in the memory i didn't clear the memory so i'm just going to <laughs> to change it uh, Let's, uh, let's press this button now and see what happens. Well, probably you won't see much. You will just see that this part lights up, okay? And this light is going on. So what happened? Um, I pressed the button and, and the command went through the positive edge detection. It set the command for one cycle only and it set the light. Okay, it can be as well a command to start a, a machine or, or whatever. Actually, I'm using edges a lot in my programs. Why? Because they are a great trigger. Because they only come for one PLC cycle. That makes the program much safer and more predictable. So, for example, if you set a command but the conditions for the machine to move are not there, if you use an edge and suddenly the conditions would come, nothing would happen because the timing of the command was wrong, meaning something was not okay. However, if you wouldn't use an edge and the command would just be hanging there, it would be constantly there. It could hurt someone when the machine can finally move. All the conditions come, the machine starts to move and it's not the right way to write your code because it's not very predictable and i'm working on a bigger course where i will show you how exactly i'm doing that and how i'm making my software predictable well structured easy to read and maintain and also easy to write okay but let's uh, let's come back here uh, i will also add a stat command here i also want to use an edge I'm going to use the end trick this time and all of the auxiliary bits are already prepared so we have the stop button here and trick here you will see that the stop button input is is going to be coming constantly even if the button is not pressed it's only disappearing after we press the button the reason why I've explained it uh, in one of the previous videos is because of the safety reason. So this is how it's going to work. I press the button, the negative 
edge occurred because reset the light uh, but we didn't even see it was so quick it was just one plc cycle that we weren't even able to see it and but we know it was there because it affected the block again start command and stop command okay so the edges we're not even able to see it but if we program them properly they do the work and they do the work in the way that it should be done and that's it for the flip-flops and and the edges um if you are not part of our facebook group yet where i'm trying to to help you to to learn tie portal and also you can ask questions to to other guys the link to the group is in the description it will be nice if you join it if you are interested in the course i'm working on the link is also in the description see you guys in the next video